My name is Dr. Jennifer Willett. I'm a professor in the School of Visual Arts at the University of Windsor. I am director of Incubator Hybrid Laboratory at the intersection of art, science, and ecology. And I'm the director of BioArt Camp. I've invited 20 artists, scientists, and students to join me here in the Rocky Mountains at the Banff Center for the Arts and at Castle Mountain Hostel, where we will be building a portable bio art laboratory in the forest. The goal of this project is to transport the laboratory ecology from within the institution outside into an ecological environment. The idea behind this type of work comes from many years of me working in laboratory spaces and seeing that um, the lab itself is an ecology in a way that is not often represented in popular media. With a project like this, I am interested in allowing the general public, as well as artists and scientists and students, and you, the viewer of this video, the opportunity to see that the laboratory is in fact teeming with life. That when we manipulate life in the lab, we are in turn manipulating ourselves and our ecology. I also see BioArt Camp as a field experiment, an opportunity to bring a variety of specialists and students together from around the world and across Canada to allow them to commune and live together and make work together as an opportunity to bring new discourse to our understanding of biotechnology. I feel like we've really begun all, like three years, all this hard work, and we are here. <laughs> Two years, and they only gave it to us last week. Yeah. They really tried to shut it down many times. We, the story will be told. I think what we should do is uh, get down to a little bit of business. So the first thing I want to do is we'll give you your packages. Here, including we have our schedule, we have our uh, permits, we have uh, emergency phone numbers. This booklet is the small print of BioArt Camp. Considered a field research station of the University of Windsor, although they are willing to take no liability, they do expect us to follow all of the regulations. So one of those regulations is that you all, um, those of you who are working in the lab, are required biosafety training. Not to eat glass, that you're not going to uh, inject yourself or other people with um, bio waste, these types of things. <laughs> Of course, each of you will receive one of these as a part of your participation in the project. This way I will not lose you in the forest. <laughs> uh, Castle Mountain Hostel itself used to, was originally a, a, not, it was a, I want to call it an internment camp. It was used for um, housing Eastern Europeans during the war, um, similar as the Japanese internment that you heard about um, in Canada. So the facility was originally built for that, but in addition to that, it is in the middle of um, the National Park, but it's also in the middle of uh, Aboriginal areas as well. <laughs> um, and I would like to be really clear with you that we are operating under about three different permits that if we create any infractions or infringements of their rules, they can shut us down, send us home, parties over. At um, first of all, we have a species at risk handout here. These are endangered species in the park. The second component that I want to talk to you about in re regards to Parks Canada is um, a copy here I have of the restricted activity permit. These permits, this permit is what we ask them to do activity in the park that is normally disallowed. The primary thing is that we are collecting specimens from the park. All of you have little tiny collections in your projects. Um, this is highly illegal. This is, we are in like a, it's a national heritage site, but it's also like a world UNESCO site, I think. Every rock belongs to the people and to the sort of natural environment, and it is not at our disposal. Paul is the only one who can make a collection off campus, and it is only under the supervision of parks employees. One time. One time. <laughs> you get also are under a review from Human and Animal Research Ethics at my university. There can be no human work that is not approved. Mary Pierre has human research ethics for her interviews, but that's it. 
Um, and there can, if you want to work on anything with a vertebrate, the answer is no. <laughs> okay, no vertebrate. It's imperative that you follow the rules according to collections, biosafety, etc. But in addition to that, I want you to know that I know the rules very well. And as most bio artists, I'm very adept at finding the holes in the rules so that we can still do what we want. We are in a bear corridor. They've had two grizzlies and one black bear in the last month. Okay. Now, I don't want you to freak out. This is not uh, a <laughs> <this is not, laughs> Everything that is smelly in any way, like agar, needs to be put into the building. Um, I've also, in your, when you receive your vests, you will all also receive a bear bell. Um, wear it. Okay, is it alright if I drive now? Is everybody ready? Yeah, I don't have the yeah. thing to attach it, so I'm not sure what it is. Let me see. I found one that put his thing in it. Maybe. But I didn't know it would be so nice. I thought it would be more painful. Yeah, yet you saw that. I really did, and I thought that we would argue more. <laughs> All right, we're in. We're going to the forest. What's the weather forecast? Uh, thunder showers, unfortunately. But this is normal. Because the purpose of the trip is to go out in the woods. So I said, I think Banff is the size of Holland. It's narrow, so it's maybe a couple hours wide, but I would say three to five hours uh, long. You can hardly compare that to a petri dish, uh, <laughs> Dr. Jennifer. It is. It's a, just a very large petri dish. Because it's been cordoned off. It's 100 years now. It's the 100th anniversary. And they um, cordoned off the boundaries, and they're very careful about what they let in and out of the park. And um, I think that it's just a very large, controlled environment. Yeah, over here. Over here. We'll just alternate. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Plastic looks good, thank you. Right. Someone has me staple gun repo. Isn't it? And then it's going to have all like, you know, lab equipment and tchotchkes <laughs> yeah. I'm really pleased with some of the aesthetics that have been established. Really, I sense that the group understands what I'm talking about, about sort of um, working with create, um, camping and outdoorsman's aesthetics and ecological aesthetics for understanding biotechnology. Um, one thing I want to tell you, a uh, general starter, is that uh, this morning we were driving between here and Johnson's Canyon, which is maybe seven minutes from here, and we saw a baby bear cub on the side <gasps> of the road. It's a black bear cub. With a cub comes a mother, <laughs> an angry, protective mother. So I want to let you all know that it was delightful and exciting to see this cub, and the cub was the size of Raffi, I must say. It was very cute. Um, but that means it's a new cub. It's a cub this year. And uh, there was probably seven or eight cars pulled over at the side of the highway, and people with their cameras moving in the forest towards the bear cub. I think there's a real push through another discourse, which is art history, to identify, draw a circle around, and quantify yeah. something yeah. that is an emergent property. Right. And as a reaction to that, what happens is, in terms of art history, like, I can tell you one of three or four or five different contested histories, mm -hmm. but right now, those histories are not really a history. It's the same as, you know, Jansen's history of art. These are programs of history that are being constructed right now. So I think that a lot of work that may be used biological processes or, or material in the past have retroactively been re-described as bioart in order to create like some sort of lineage mm. for what may be happening in, in the art technology sector today. Yeah. I, yeah, and I think in terms of this question of like does it have to be wet to be bioart, I mean I think, I think the one thing that I think is generally we probably all agree on is that we want to have something that is, in terms of this kind of practice, like it is media, it is kind of based in physical, the physicality of this media and um, the liveness of media and, and all this and that we basically we don't want to just, uh, art is this, this purely representational, right, like biology is subject rather than uh, is probably doesn't need to be sort of seen within this category. That's maybe a, you know, you, you, you can have things as your subject and not necessarily be sort of um, 
mm, grouped within these kind of media specific. Uh, but I would argue that the way you're talking about sort of like a lot of what you use as carcasses and carapace produced by life forms at a certain level um, in terms of highly evolved complex organisms, a lot of the work that I do asks us to understand very small, maybe imperceptible organisms also as life forms that we share this planet with. Right. And so maybe inversely in rather than encouraging people to always look at these larger pictures, mm -hmm. my work asks <clears throat> my, us to sometimes also uh, apply some of that criteria and thought to some very small, imperceivable life forms. No, no, I, I agree. That's very important yeah. because it's, it's a, it shows that spectrum that's been pervade through. But ultimately, I would hope, because I live in the world and I, I sense all the environmental issues, I, I, I hope it's... You know, in some small way, it's contributing to how it might help give insights into all this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they'll be, but uh, hopefully it moves that way, and, and I think it will. Glen Rawhide. <laughs> uh, uh oh, I like this picture. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, yeah. I am. Oh. I love it. That <laughs> thanks. Was oh. Magical. Ah, oh, thanks. Really, that. Oh, thanks. Oh. That was something very special. Oh, thanks. Mm. Thank thanks. you. Well, this is phase one. You all I fix know. up stuff I'm for looking phase forward two. to phase two. And Good. I got lots of DNA. I made enough tubes for you know. For all the PCR and Adam to do anything funky. If you wanted. have any leftover, can I have one for my natural history collection? You totally can. Thank yep. You. Paul's sample worked. Did so film? I think yeah, so filmed it, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. we got it. It's not a great we don't have a great picture of it because my camera isn't great and that and it's not but it's we I got have a great we camera, got it. But I guess it's already disrupted. <laughs> Yeah, I just got a couple things to say before you enter our lab. Uh, it is a lab, so there is uh, a bit of biohazard, but it's nothing different than kitchen grade. Nothing I'm going to get hurt by? No, nothing different than kitchen grade. I need you. Oh, you need me? Yeah. So, and I don't have things, to wear any protective clothing. No, no, no. We just ask that you don't touch anything. You can look around unless you're invited to by an artist or science, senior artist or scientist. Okay. And we just ask that you sanitize your hands as you enter and exit the yeah. lab. So I can give Sounds you a good. squirt here. Yeah. Have you had your women's training? Yeah. Women's training. Oh yeah, it's we all, had our women's training. It's all you ever had a book and safety everything? Safety data, you know. Why didn't you tell me yeah, I couldn't kind of touch anything, David? Uh, well, you know, I've been, I've been You've been touching everything. <laughs> yeah. No, here's another place that we're going to show them that one. Yeah. 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 How are you doing? I'm just about to put them together. Oh, I've lost my voice. Okay. It seems like yeah. Alberta is paying ecology through yeah. its oil money. <laughs> yes. Pay off. Yes. I chose Alberta specifically because I grew up here, so I really yeah. understand this culture. Uh, uh, like, uh, oh, okay. I had the history of Banff National Park. It was cordoned off a hundred years ago, and nothing was allowed in or out. And it becomes like a petri dish rather than natural. Yeah, yeah. And so for me, it was a really good place for us to, to be in work. Yeah. Have you met Jeanette yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> How are you, Jennifer? Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm very happy. I just see all these people working on my project for me. <laughs> and I'm so grateful. You know what? I worked so hard on this for so many years. And it was just a dream. It 
it was a silly idea. And I see all these really important, intelligent artists and scientists working my project. But the thing that made me cry the most was to see Grant building my tent. <laughs> <laughs> there, JW first cry. In a creek this fast, the bones would go down the creek, so. Yeah. I mean. Natural, right? <laughs> so something well, had lunch the here. This is a, you know, maybe a piece of a deer or an elk, and uh, something ate it here. It was lunch. Show <laughs> you where the site was, yeah. though. This is fur from a kill site, so maybe a piece of the animal was dragged there and it was eaten. Oh, that's I like going. the double entendre, collecting. I'm We're collecting Adam Zaretsky. All right. <laughs> nice. Okay, so you can try both pipetters to get a feeling for ver variety. I, w I don't want you to reenact it. I want you to let me collect your Dietrichs. Oh, cool. Yeah. I just want to let you know that I do take sharps and Thank you. Out, yeah, you, know. yeah, yes, you look, look back inside. to biosafety. Ugh. That's safe. You can smoke here. Is to photo document the specimen in its natural habitat. So Casey, can you come hold this right here, please? Yep. All right. <laughs> can you get my head squished in there? I forgot to bring my uh, compass. I was going to give my location. But we'll say back camp. Thank you. Just put it in the microscopy box. Okay. Okay. Cool. Just take that. Here we go. Sample number one. Adam Z. Tent two. I think we should help Jen by. Is this the dirty lab? Ooh. Yes. This is dirty lab. Tent two. I got the last permits for the special collections on the day before you arrived, even though I started this in 2009. This lab that we built is a, is a field research station at the University of Windsor, so all of those permits were needed to be get. And in addition to that, we had to evaluate all of the projects <coughs> for human and animal research ethics approval based on what level of life forms that you were working with. Mm -hmm. And those ethics approvals were received both through my university, at the University of Windsor, Duke University, as well as um, the Banff Centre. But unfortunately, one of our participants did break the rules of one of these permits. And it's really important to understand that when you are dealing with pushing an institutional structure to agree to something they don't want to agree to, then you have to stick to the rules. So one of our participants was sent home and it was unfortunate, but I think it really explored some of the boundaries and understandings of what is the relationship to bioart and performance practices in relationship to institutions that house them. And that's something that I want to investigate further in my research in the years to come. The thing that happened for me with bioart camp is that I realized that I was not only manipulating life on a microscopic scale or collecting life from the ecology, that I was also manipulating my own life and the life of my colleagues. And not in a masterful, top-down scientific kind of way, not in a human research ethics kind of way, but that with bioart, there is an intrinsic connection between what I do and what I say and what I live. And BioArt Camp made us live our work and our research together and made us address our living as art. And this is something new and unexpected that for me resulted as knowledge and understanding about BioArt from this event. And I'm terrified and grateful for that knowledge. 
Absolutely. Um, the metaphor of the petri dish holds very true, even after having been in the woods. In fact, I would say even more so. The petri dish for me is certainly around Banff National Park, and I really, I really realized while we were out in nature that there's almost nothing natural left. That even through attempting to preserve it as natural, we have turned it into culture. And I would say the same thing about the camp itself as well. The camp for me also became a petri dish, a culture. A culture of cells, of organisms, of artists, of people, of animals. And I really felt that the petri dish happened on many levels. There was a petri dish in the lab and the culture of life in that, the petri dish of the camp, the petri dish of Banff National Park. Possibly also the the observation through the camera contributed to this element. I really felt like we were looking at ourselves through microscopes as we were in the moment. When we were in the camp, we would sort of tip inside and see the day's footage running on the computer. And I, I really felt that we were that we were being observed and that I was one of the organisms in that petri dish. I think it was very successful. I'm really happy and I'm, I'm haggard and exhausted and I'm not sure, but I think that those are the appropriate responses to an experience such as this. That this environment is indifferent to us it is indifferent to our suffering, it is indifferent to our pleasure, to our joy, and that by enduring a, a, an expedition, an opportunity like this, we are, on the one hand, experiencing very beautiful things, we're making art together, and it is magnificent, but it is also, it takes its toll. And for me, this was a journey, and there were successes, and there were failures, and I gave it absolutely everything that I had inside of me. And I'm grateful for this. And I'm heartbroken. And I'm excited. And I'm ready for the next one. And I'm never doing it again, all at the same time. Do you see his eye poking out at us? Give me one second. We're having a birth over here. There you go. So it's very fragile. You have to be careful with it. This is not for riding. There we go. <laughs> what do you think of that? We really have to thank Kevin McLaughlin, my assistant who built this for us. I mean, this is really something special. I think in honor of Binny, Billy, we should actually also point out the anatomical correctness of the yes, beast. It was Billy her favorite part. Billy was very excited by the <laughs> enid, <laughs> which she was always very proud of. <laughs> Is this a bioact temp or not? Yeah. <laughs> I think for good luck, everyone should rub yeah. balls <laughs> every day. <laughs> every day. Yeah, you want another one? Like that? Does it have to be every day? <laughs> well, when you feel like you need a little bit of extra luck, <laughs> do it. I do. There you go. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Did you see the anus? Did you see the tail. Oh my, oh my god! god. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my god. Whoa. Can you stick your finger in there? No. <laughs> I asked her and she, was, oh, she didn't have enough time to really yeah, make a trail. Take a Adam. Here you go. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so the incubator. <laughs> <laughs>